All right, so it's hard right now to buy a single family house, whether you're gonna live in it or it's gonna be a rental. Uh, rates are high. At the time of recording this, it's around 8% as opposed to you know, two, 3% we were seeing several years ago, two, three years ago. So you know, what if I told you there was a way that you could buy someone's house and keep their low rate? Would that be interesting to you, right? Well, there's two ways I wanna talk about how people are doing this and ways that they're finding opportunity right now how to get single family houses either to live in or to be able to rent out. So we're gonna go with three easy steps. I've got a great quote for you at the end. All right, so my name is Bronson Hill. I'm the CEO of Bronson Equity. We do multifamily properties like this. We also do ATM machines and car washes and oil and gas to help provide uh, investors with passive cash flow opportunities. So I'll have some opportunity on how you can join our investment club and hear about our deals in a minute. Um, so quick disclaimer, I'm not your investment advisor. These are just my opinions. What is a loan assumption, right? A loan assumption, we hear, you hear the word assume, right? You've heard this, if you assume you make an ass out of you and me, right? That that's in the word assume. Um, but what does it mean to assume a loan, right? Well, what it can happen is it can keep a, a rate low. So if a seller is selling a house, obviously maybe they don't wanna sell, but they have to sell it, and the rate is 3%. If you buy it, you're gonna basically buy it and then put an 8% loan on it. Well, what if there's a way you can actually just take their loan and get it in your name? And there's two ways to do assumptions right now. There's two major ways that we're seeing, and these are ways that I'm gonna get into kind of how it works, but the first is a uh, FHA or there's a VA loan. So FHA is like a first time home buyer. Uh, you can typically only have one at a time. You, it's not even first time, but it's, it's an FHA loan. There's also, uh, and that's about 11% of all loans in 2022 were FHA loans, right? So there's quite a few that are out there. And then a VA loan, which is a veteran's loan, it's about uh, 8% of all loans. So between those two, it's almost 20% are out there, one in five homes uh, nationally that are purchased through these type of loans. Now with a veteran loan, you can't, um, you don't have to be in the military. It's a military person, they can sell it to you and you can assume that loan. But um, you know, it may limit their ability to go get another, get another loan, but um, it does, uh, it's something that you can be able to assume that loan. So there obviously are some stipulations here on if you assume a loan, what that means, what that means for you. I believe FHA, if you, assume their loan, then I believe they still can go get an unlimited now this loan is in is in your name. So there are consultants that can kind of help you with this process, but there's a way to, you can call an agent and say, hey, I'm looking for this type of, of house, this type of property, this could be one to four units as well. And you say, I'm looking for something that is assumable and they can search in the MLS by, is this FHA, is this VA, what type of debt does it have? And then it gives you some opportunity to be able to come in and be able to assume their debt. So that means, you know, if they have 27 years left on their loan at 3%, you just come in, maybe you pay a little fee and you're basically in that same loan that has 27 more years on it, which is pretty awesome. So that's one way is to actually physically assume the loan. There's another way that's called subject to financing, right? So subject to, uh, there's this book out here called uh, Wealth Without Cash, uh, Pace Morby, this guy here, if you haven't met Pace, uh, very cool guy, but it talks about what does it mean to be a subject to loan? Well, it's the same scenario. Someone's got a 3% loan and they sell the house. Let's say I buy the house, they sell the house to me, but with the loan, they keep the loan in their name, right? Well, why would they do that? Why would someone do that? And why would it be the benefit to you? Well, the benefit to you is you keep the loan at the lower rate. The benefit to them is it's in their name. They just will have to trust that you're gonna make those payments, right? So typically this involves using a special escrow company. They can kind of manage all that, making sure everything's there. There's certain things in the contract of how it's stipulated. But why would the seller wanna do that, right? Because again, there's some risk there that maybe the new buyer doesn't end up paying the loan and they get the property back or what happens. Why would they do it? Well, one reason they wanna do it is let's say they had an issue where uh, valuations were high and that's when they bought and then now they got a lower rate, but their value of their home has actually dropped. So if they sold, maybe they'd have a loss or maybe they, to, in order to pay the real estate agent, there'd be some sort of either loss or break even. And this would allow them to either break even or maybe to uh, even get an as a higher asking price for the house. Because in this type of situation, uh, a new buyer could come in and actually slightly overpay, <clears throat> pay a little bit more money, maybe bring some money to closing so that the seller gets some money to be able to go and you know be able to close and not not have to lose money or just break even. So again, this it's a unique situation, but there are uh, you know a lot of folks that are doing this and they have a community around. It. I just think it's a very interesting thing to look into, right? So you have loan assumptions, which is probably a little easier to kind of manage. Obviously, you may need a consultant in that. 
with subject to financing. Uh, it's almost kind of the, the wholesaling type route, in my opinion, the way where it's just, it's gonna be a lot more legwork, but there are ways you can do it either with, with no money down or very little money and be able to get it done. So that's another thing that is very interesting. One thing I did not mention about assuming loans is sometimes um, when you assume a loan, uh, if there's a lot of equity in the house, you may have to actually bring a bunch of cash to closing. Um, so that is something just to be aware of as well. So for example, if the loan is a $700,000 loan, I'm speaking of LA because stuff's really expensive and maybe the home is worth a million dollars, well, to, to assume that loan, the seller may want to have the difference, right? So you have to bring the 300,000 in closing. So there's, there are some caveats here, but there are also ways that having that lower interest rate uh, is incredibly valuable, right? The asset is not just the house, it's the debt because that controls the cost of money for the next 27 years or 30 years or 25 years, whatever that period is. So the conclusion now is there's lots of opportunities now. You can get creative. Um, you can find out the listings of who has an FHA loan or a VA loan. And then you know, it can make sense for a seller uh, you know, to, to like who has you know, no money in the house to be able to sell to you and see that there is value in having that loan and do some sort of subject to or creative financing. So I want to share this quote with you. It comes from Nelson Mandela. It says, it always seems impossible until it is done. Right. So uh, sometimes I, I look back and I say, man, how have we raised thirty five million dollars for different uh, deals and bought all these multifamily units and other things? Well, it's because we just put one foot in front of the other, put one foot in front of the other, and just try to learn and kept learning and growing and looking for the opportunities. And there are lots of ways to be able to find creative ways to make money. Um, I want to check this. I want you to check this video out. This is my three favorite assets outside of real estate right now, right? There's some really attractive things outside of real estate. Check it out here. The cash flow, some have tax advantages and other things. Um, and then if you haven't joined our investment club, you can check it out down below in the links. Uh, we do multifamily, we're doing oil and gas, we're doing ATM machines and car washes. And if all that sounds crazy, um, which kind of it did to me before, it's just, it's amazing. If you want to learn, you want to earn more, you just have to be willing to learn more, right? So uh, getting comfortable with just how do different assets work uh, besides things that I know. So love to set up a call with you, get you educated, kind of get you uh, understanding how this stuff works, how we're creating a cash flow for investors. But thanks for taking the time to educate yourself. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode.